How is everyone doing today? Just checking out some sizing here. We're going to try something fun today. I'm going to demonstrate a C to C stripe. I'm going to work on a little, a little corner to corner blanket. And I'm also going to be doing some beaded crochet today to show you how to do a little bit of beading. And we're going to make a little, a little beaded clutch probably. I think that would be nice. We're going to give it a try. Um, might even do a little different color of bead depending on what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pull some other beads out too. So, how is everyone this morning? I'm up and I'm ready to crochet. Are you ready to crochet? Give everybody a few minutes to get in and we are going to be doing some corner to corner crochet today. And we are also going to make a little beaded clutch of sorts. I'm just looking to see what color of yarn I might want to use. I think I might use some of this over here. All right. Last minute preparations here. I change stuff up at the last minute. I've got um, two skeins of yarn over here. Thank you for the share. Handbot, thank you for the share. That was handbot, yes? Yes. Share with your friends. I'm here to crochet with you, teach you how to crochet, teach you how to knit. I'm just going to start off with a few things that I would like to show you. Um, some of the things that are going on now might have been trending in the past, but is now <clears throat> coming back into style. I uh, want to give you a little uh, head start on some of these things. If you want to, you know, if you'd like to do the, the what's trending. Trying to get comfortable here with the dog laying at my feet. Hopefully they don't start barking again this morning. All right, so we're going to need just a little steel crochet hook. I have a 1.75 millimeter hook here. Um, I think we're going to start right away with this beading because that's what I've started jumping right into. So I have some wooden beads. I was looking for some pony beads, but I have some wooden beads. I had to get a smaller crochet hook because my hook will not fit. The one that I'm going to be crocheting with will not fit through these beads. So we're going to get started with a single row here as soon as I find the end in my yarn. Hopefully we're lucky and we find the end real easy. Yeah, not too bad. I got a little clumpity clump here. Let's see if we can't get this unwound here. starts to pull tight always loosen it up then try to pull from both sides gently sometimes there does get a little knot in here okay I think we might have it this time maybe nope <clears throat> Should have had all this chosen and pulled out before I uh, started. But this is the most real you can get as a crafter by doing a live video and not having things pre-prepared. This is what we go through. Because we definitely don't want to... I'm not sure who that is who's trying to join my live, but I don't do co-host I do do multi-guests but I don't do co-hosts sorry 
Unless, of course, I know you. And um, I couldn't see your little icon down there. So I couldn't tell who you were. If you'd like to co-host with me, you know, put it in the comments so I can see who you are. Because I will only co-host with people that I know. Good morning, Rebecca. How are you? Oh, it was you who were trying to co-host. Um, did you have a question? Oh, thank you. I think that's Bealey. I hope I'm not murdering people's names on here. So we're going to do a little bit of beaded crochet as soon as I can get this untangled here. I really don't want to have to cut it but it's, it's given me a headache already this morning. I am probably am going to have to cut it. I don't want to. It's a lot of yarn. Well, guess what? We're going to cut it, and we'll use this for little... We'll use this for our trim for our little mug rugs that I'm going to show you today, which are really adorable. So that's what we'll use that for. So we've got this cut off. I'm going to go ahead and start with a... A simple chain. I'm going to use my handy dandy crochet hook that I got from Get Crafty Brooks. And, um, well, thank you, um, Rebecca. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to add beads to your work. Um, a lot of people like to string them on ahead of time. I like to, you know, not do that because then you got to unstring beads if you don't use them all. I'll show you how to add them on as you go, and they will be secure. You can do this in knit or crochet. Um, but right now I'm going to show you the crochet, but this hook I got from Get Crafty Brooks it's with the, the silicone beads and the Susan Bates hook, which I love so much. Um, but yeah, we're going to start with a, a simple chain and I'm only going to do a panel and I'm going to show you how you can do just a simple little panel and you can turn this into a little bag. Okay, so we're just going to crochet and uncounted amount here. I just want to get it to a width that I like. And I'm using an oversized bead simply because I need to do that to show you the actual technique of putting the beads on. Oh, so you've been doing it half your life now, knit and crochet. Isn't that great? <clears throat> yeah, I do both as well. I knit and crochet. <clears throat> and we're just going to do a row of, I'm going to do some half doubles here because half double is my favorite stitch. And I'm going to half double all the way across here. Yeah, my mom taught me when I was nine how to crochet and I only knew how to do chains. So I chained all different colors and all different lengths and I strung them around my bedroom like streamers. It looked like a Mardi Gras party going on in there. It really did. And then I got tired of doing just chains, so I went to my mom and said, I, I want to know how to do this. So she she taught me how to do those things. And then I wanted to do a pattern. As I grew older, I found a pattern that I wanted to do. And I could not get past the abbreviations. And bless my mother, she wrote out the whole pattern, word by word by word. And right behind the word like knit or pearl or, you know, single crochet or double crochet, she would write the abbreviation. So as I read it, I was reading the word and seeing the abbreviation after it. And she helped me get past that. So, and I've actually surpassed her in skill. She said that some of the stuff that I do that she would never even think about trying. Like double knitting she can't understand the double knitting. Um, taking a pattern and instead of having a large panel of stockinette stitch, breaking down the stitch count so that I can put lace work in there or texture with cables and things like that. And she just, you know, was like thoroughly amazed. So now we're going to turn our work. We're going to chain two, and I'm going to do one or two because I don't want to have this right on the edge. And I think I'm going to work through the back loop just to give us a little ripple. Let's see how that does. 
I like to change stuff up a little bit. Now we are going to add a bead on. Normally, if my beads are big enough, I can, and I did find one in here that was big enough, and I'll show you several ways to do this, especially if you're working with little glass beads. I can put it on this hook, right? Then I'm going to just, when I go to do my stitch, go to do my half double. When I pull it through here, I'm going to pull it through the bead as well. And then I forgot to do my half double. But anyway, there's the bead in your work. I don't know if you saw that because I think I was out of camera frame. But I'm going to do a couple more half doubles and I'll show you that again. Probably wasn't in camera frame. I need to pay attention and make sure that I'm in there. And I'm putting two half doubles in between each bead because they're pretty big beads. Double crochet is your favorite? Yeah. I, I like to not have so much of airy fabric if I'm making something warm. Now, if I'm doing lace work and stuff like that with crochet, yeah, doubles and trebles make really, really nice lacy spaces and stuff like that. Okay, so let me see if I can't find another one that I can get on my hook here so I can show you again this way. That one might be a little tight. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to, I'm going to skip the half double yarn over and I'm going to go down into the stitch that I want to do. You saw me put that right on the hook. Let me move away from these beads so you can see the beads here a little better. And I'm going right down into the next stitch. And I'm almost going to do the technique of a, sil a single crochet because I'm going to come through my stitch and then I'm going to go through the bead. Okay, so grab a hold of that yarn. It's a little tight, so I kind of have to squeeze it out here. So that way I've worked it through the bead. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Making sure not to pull this thread too tight so it goes to the back. And your bead will stand forward on your work. But you won't see the bead through the back, as you can see here on the other side. I'm going to do a couple, two more half doubles, and I'll show you another way because some of the beads are really small and I cannot get my hook through here. So what you can do is preload your beads onto the string and then feed them down. But then when you do that, you don't know if you're making a color picture, if you're putting your beads in the right color order. This way will allow you to change up beads if you don't like one color next to the other. Because once you've got them strong, they're on there. That's it. They have to go in that order. So this is the way that you can do it without that. Um, now, as far as doing this next bead, what I'm going to do is... Let me see how we're going to do this here. We're going to go down through here. We're going to pull up this loop. And then what we're going to do okay, is take our crochet hook out. I'm going to grab the smaller one. Bead's going to go on the smaller hook. Uh, I think I want a green one next. And I'm going to pull this loop through this bead like that. And then I can put this back on my crochet hook and finish up that stitch. There's another way. And this way you can put tiny um, glass beads or seed beads into your shawl work. And you can put them anywhere you want. So I wanted to show you this. Now, when you do this, we're going to continue on here every two stitches putting a bead. You can do every stitch if you like, um, but that kind of, you know, tightens them up. They would be so close together. I like a little bit of space. So I'm doing two half doubles in between the beads. Okay. And let's see if we can find another one here that we can fit. No but we want a blue one. I want a blue one next. So I'm going to go down here as if to do a single crochet, pull a loop through, and we're going to place that bead on here. Thank you for the likes. I keep getting a, a buzz, and I don't know what that is. Like I've hit a prize or something. Then I'm going to put this right back on that 
crochet hook that we're working with and take this little one out and then finish up with a yarn over and pull through those two loops. Now when you do this you want to do um, beads every other row if they're big like this. You can find your bead spacing when you start doing the actual work. And I like the way that's sitting in there. It's got a nice little ridge right there. Oh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you so much. But yeah, we're going to go ahead through here and put a couple more beads on here. And then we're going to turn around and do just a single little row. Don't pull that back out of there. There we go. Um, What color now? I think I might go with an orange bead. Grab a hold of your loop. Pull it through that bead. And put it back on your crochet hook. Doing it this way, it does slow you down a little bit. But you can put the beads in the color order that you want them in. Um, you can actually use beads like this to spell out someone's name on the side of a bag if you wanted to. Um, you could create a little picture um, with a little, um, like a little Grafgan type picture. And you can use these for the centers of flowers that you've done in the background. Um, you can put green beads in a row and then do a flower petal at the top. Um, you, a lot of things that you can do with beads that, you know, not everybody thinks about. All right, we need to go ahead and pull up our loop so we can put another bead on. And like I said, you can use any size bead you want. Um, you definitely have to make sure that the yarn will fit through it. So you can't use seed beads with chunky yarn. Because you're just not going to get it through there. All right. Now I know that it's like three stitches per bead. So I'm going to go ahead and put one more down here. And I think I, yep, got two more stitches. Let's see. Let's go with the little light pink one down here. Get a whole, a whole stitch. Doesn't want to cooperate with me today. And we got that bead secured on there. Go ahead and do the next two half doubles here. So not counting worked out pretty well for me today. So we got two stitches on each side of each bead. Start and finish. And then I'll lay this down so I can flatten it out a little bit. And when we get our next row on there, you have a row of beads. The next row will be just a solid row. We're not going to put any beads in there. Or if you wanted to, you could do a little beaded diagram or whatever. And your second row of beads could go in between the first set. If you wanted to stack your beads like that. And you could stack them because I'm, I'm seeing a, a pattern here. Patterns drive me crazy. And your next row could be like that. I need a green one. And you could just have diagonal rows of color go up the front. Or you can only put one row on there if you want to. And then you can continue this on to make a little small handbag. I'm going to go ahead and do through both loops on this one. If we can go through both loops. Yeah, I just got to watch what I'm doing. I'm out of camera again. Go through both loops. Mm -hmm. 
It's also going to demonstrate uh, corner to corner again today, and I'll show you how to do color changes in the corner to corner. I'll do a little striping. feel like I'm going to end up with too many, but I'm not. I just got to make sure I get all of them because they all look different back in the camera view. I think I put my camera a little far forward this morning. So I'm having to stretch. Might have to. Uh... Oh, I'm doing another row here. I'll show you how to uh, get the beads back on. We'll do a couple of rows with the beads so that um, everyone coming in can see. Uh, it's something that people are starting to trend now, and I, I don't normally like to do the trendy things, but I know some people do like to do the trendy things. So I'm just showing you some of the techniques that you can do to, and I think I put too many on there. Maybe not. No, once I block it, it'll be all right. But, yes, how to the techniques of how to put these beads on here. And I hope I didn't miss anybody else's comments while I was going through here. Pagan Queen, you've been crocheting for 10 years? Yeah, it is really simple. And it, it when you do it like this, um, the crochet hook I'm using, Mary, is a 3.75. And I'm using a sport weight yarn. Sorry, I missed everybody's questions here while I was trying to work through that. I will do my best to keep up with you. All right, now we're going to start another row again. I'm doing half double crochets because it's simply my favorite stitch in the crochet. Um... The beads you can, if you know what order you want to put them in, or if you just want a whimsical little little order, you can pre-string the beads onto your yarn. Um, you have to make sure that you overstring, you know, because you're going to be pulling them back down through as you pull your yarn out of your skein. Um, if you don't put enough beads on and this becomes the situation, you've ran out of beads on your string and you still need to put more beads on your work as you're going. I will show you. Um, I'll show you how to put them on there. This pattern is not on YouTube. I am just doing this as we go. Uh, sport rate. This sport weight that I'm using, I do believe, is a two. It is a two. This is Nitpicks Brava Sport Weight. I just grabbed it because I like the color, especially with the beads. This here is, um, I think it's cream. Yeah, it's cream. Um, sport Weight, um, if you're from, I'm from the United States. If you're from, you know, other continents, it might be called DK. DK weight. It's it's a, th a three or a two weight yarn. I hope that helps. Some of the terms I use are are United States terms. Um, if you have just like you know, say hey, I don't understand. I'll I'll try to use the the British English terms for the weights if I if I know them. But um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this second row and we're going to place some beads on and I'm going to try and do that little vertical stripe and see how that looks. So our first bead I'm going to put on is going to be a pink one. And I need to make sure that I'm staying in camera. So I'm going to, oh, I can't kind of move it this way. Come on, you got to move. He's not going to move. So I'm just going to have to slide forward in my chair. We don't make the puppies move. So we're going to put a pink one on. So I'm going to do the two stitches before the bead, two half double crochets. Oh, you just never heard of sport weight? Okay. Yeah, not everybody just, you know, calls it by that. And again, I'm going to work in the back loop to give me this nice little uh, ridge here like I did below the beads again. We're going to try to keep that little pattern going. 
So I'm going to do two half double crochets and you can do whatever crochet you like. If it's a single crochet that you like to do, I think a half double fits the bead. So I'm not overlapping my rows. Um, therefore the half double works well. If you have a smaller, shorter bead, you might want to go down to a single crochet. Um, I wouldn't recommend because when you do put the bead on there, it is going to, if you're not careful, it will pull your work if your bead's too big and you make your stitches too tight. But you'll discover that as you work along. Okay, so now we're going to add a bead on here. Some of them, let me show you how I added. I'll have to probably do it on the purple one because the purple ones look like I have some and I don't want to put a purple one first. Yeah, we'll do this one next. Okay, I'm going to go down through my next stitch as if to do a single crochet and pull up the loop that I'm going to put my, my bead on. I'm going to take this crochet hook out because the bead is tiny. I have to use a smaller hook. Load the... I'm trying to do this with one hand here. Load the bead onto your hook. Grab a hold of the stitch that you want it to go on and just slide that bead catching on my hook here onto that stitch and then that stitch goes if it will go back onto your crochet hook then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops that I have on my hook make sure not to pull it too tight but we want this to go to the back because on the back side you won't see your beads too much those coming through there kind of keeps your beads pushed to the front side now I'm going to do two half doubles for the spacing between the beads if you want your beads closer together you don't have to do the spacing um, check it out and see how they're going to lay because this does go like a stitch and a half that's why I'm giving it extra space in between the two now, if your bead is big enough and your hook is small enough, the bead will go right onto your crochet hook, like such. Then we're going to go down into here and into that loop and pull up like we're going to do a single crochet, and we're going to pull it straight through that bead. Okay? And then you know yarn over and pull through the two like you're finishing off your single crochet and you've got your bead attached to your work this is better than trying to sew them on at the end because then that you know these are strong and held into the work and the only way they're coming off is if these strings break and you've got a double string in there I've never had any beads come out of any work that I've done You can do, um, if you make the little, um, you can make little beaded pouches like this. Why is this not working? That's why it's not working out, because I'm trying to do like a slip stitch. Like, what's going on here? I'm talking and not paying attention. Now we need the yellow one, so we definitely are going to need that tinier hook. So again, we're just going to load a yellow bead onto our crochet hook grab that loop and pull that right through and right back over onto your crochet hook then you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops simple and easy and pull some of this out here because it's creating too much tension for me, I'm trying to pull against the friction of the skein of yarn. Okay, now we're going to do a green one. So we're going to pull up a loop. Stay up here where you guys can see what I'm doing. And we need the green one now. Find one with the hole facing up that I can get into. I've seen this done with um, the glass seed beads and they use that size three crochet thread. Um, 
it does doing it like this, but this is a way, this is not really a way that you would want to do a whole project. Um, because yes, this does slow you down a good bit, but I'm showing you this for the purpose of you've already strung all your beads on here, but you didn't put enough on. This would be a way that you could add extra beads because you ran out. You didn't string enough before you started your project. You know, it's not meant to be done this way, particularly. Normally, you would take a, a yarn needle and thread it like you were going to sew with this yarn. Leave it connected to your skein and just string all the beads on that you would need if you don't have enough this is just a way that, you know, you don't have to cut your yarn, restring more, reattach it on. You can just fasten a few on this way. Yeah, nobody would want to do a project all like this. We don't want to do that one. We're getting another bead here. Let's see. Do we have one? Uh, that one's not going to be big enough. Nope. I have to put it on the little one. And then pull your loop up and right over onto your other crochet hook and then finish your stitch off. Yep. And this we could keep going with the beads and you make a long panel. Once you make your long panel, then you can fold it over. I think that this will be the last row of beads. And what I'll probably do is work up. We need an orange one now. Work up this panel to show you how you can take this and turn it into a little pouch. I have to do just some crocheted just rows back and forth. I come on here on my off days from class. That way I can show people um, what I'm working on, what I'm doing. Show you exactly how simple it can be made. And maybe get a few more people in class. Not yarn over. We're going to put another bead. We're going to put a pink bead now. I have a class on Tuesday from 8 to 10 right here on TikTok. And I teach knitting and crocheting. I teach the beginner. I teach the intermediate. I do some advanced stuff. And there's some stuff that we're going to learn together. Because there's some stuff that I still want to learn. And while I'm learning, I'll teach at the same time. We'll learn together. All right, let me get this going here. The last two stitches. And I'm going to leave that there like that. I'm going to do uh, some more rows here. So I'm just going to talk. If anybody has any questions, we're going to go through both of them now. Anything that you would like to see crochet-wise that you um, are having problems with? Um, anything, anything at all? I'm going to show you how we're going to turn this into a, a little pouch here. Yeah, in my class, too, I try to do projects that are small so that when you leave class that very day, you have, if you work along with me, because I do work more on the slower side when I'm teaching in class and when I'm demonstrating, um, I, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought I'm trying to keep up with these stitches. I like for you to have a finished project by the end of class and not have to wait until the next class and uh, say, hey, look, 
I have a problem. I can't do this. What's wrong? So the multi-guest works out well for that because you can show me your work, and I'm pretty good at finding where there are issues. You can see how that gave us a nice little rib kind of texture to that too here. I don't know if you can see it as well on the camera, but we got like a nice little neat raised row below both set of beads. So I'm going to leave that like that, and I'm going to work through both loops for the rest of this pattern here. And this isn't any particular pattern. This is just something that I have done up to demonstrate how to do these beads. And I don't like having a bunch of little things laying around that aren't completed that I've, you know, used for demonstration. So I'm going to continue on with this. An easy way to count stitches. Oh, honey, you're asking an amazing question. Every crocheter wants to know an easy way to count stitches. I think that's the hardest thing ever. Um, I don't count a stitch until I've completed it. So if I started, you know, counting right here, this would, I would not count this stitch until I went one. And then I don't count this one until two, when I'm doing the last stroke of the stitch. Yeah, there's absolutely no easy way. That's what catches all of us crafters up, keeping count of stitches. I know, I don't know if you've seen a lot of the, the meme type videos here on TikTok about um, don't bother a crocheter while they're counting. <laughs> I think somebody actually put the soundtrack, um, something about the fastest way to die and you've got somebody counting stitches and somebody's trying to talk to them. Actually, I think I added an extra one there. Let me check and see what we got going on here. Yeah, I did. But at the end, you, you're going to chain. You, you always chain after you turn unless it's otherwise indicated. But you chain however many chains for the height of the stitch that you're doing. Yeah. Um, do you need me to redo the end again? Or I can show you here at the other end, just work it really quickly until I get to the end. And you really need to know how many stitches you have. I don't know how many stitches I, I, I chained when I started because I, I did say an un, <laughs> undetermined amount. But it turned out to be pretty good because I had all that I needed to do what I wanted to do on both ends and have it matching. But yeah, you just count your stitches as you go along if you're working rows. Um, like I'm doing now, you would normally be counting your stitches. Um, and I'm going to show you too here at the end, um, visually what it looks like from the top. So you can see exactly how many stitches you have left and paying attention to your stitches too, as you're doing them, because the top of this stitch is here, not here. This is the top of the next stitch. So, you know, paying attention to how your stitches line up. Like, I'm getting ready to do this double crochet here, and here's the stitch right here in the top. Okay, that lines up with this one. So, you just have to know your stitches for your row. Um, I've been doing this for over 40 years, so I only count like every four or five rows just to double check and make sure. So I'll do four or five rows before I even do a count. And I'm going to back this up here so I can show you the top of this. Okay. On the bottom here, we have one, two, three. Let me move up a little bit closer here. I have three stitches left. One, two, and this one right here between my fingers. Okay. So you only have three more spots to do. Some people try to come over here and grab this little loop over here on the side. No, you only have three to do. You have one right here, one right here, and one right here. And if you look at the top, you'll see, okay, you have one complete V right here for this stitch. You have one complete V for this one and one complete V for this one. This is just a loop hanging out in the middle of nowhere. 
A lot of people try to catch that little loop. You don't need that loop. You just need those three. If I can get that to those three right there. Don't mess with this little loop here on the end because that's just from the height of your stitch. Some people try to do that little loop. Mm -mm. It's not a complete V. You don't do it. That's where you get your extra stitches from. Yeah, I spot check because I've done it enough. Now, if I if I start with something new, yeah, I might do it more often, you know, a new technique. Um, like I haven't done mosaic. I haven't done brioche, uh, brioche, brioche knitting and mosaic crochet. I haven't done either of those, and I want to. And I'm going to, and I'm going to do it right here on live. And you guys can watch me make all the horrid mistakes and work along with me. We'll work through it together. So, yeah, at this point, we've done all of our stitches from the previous row. So we're going to turn it chain two, which is for the height of a half double crochet. That's why we chain two. Single crochet, you only chain one. Um, double crochet, um, it could be two or three, depending on, you know, the crocheter. Each stitch has its own chain height so that you, you know, start your stitch at the height of the other ones. Because if not, one stitch is going to be way down here and the other one's going to be way up here. And you're going to, your work is going to turn if you don't chain enough at the beginning of your row. So that's another Another thing you have to be aware of. Okay. My yarn's trying to split up on me now. And we're just going to work some rows here. Thank you for the shares. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, the Tunisian crochet, I, I did demonstrate some of that. Yes, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was Friday. No, it might have been Saturday. I lose track of my days. I do this because it makes me happy, crocheting and knitting. I share because it makes me even happier. And it keeps me distracted. See how I did that last one, that last double crochet right there? I'm going to put my hook in there and show you what I'm talking about here. Some people think that this is a stitch out here past it. And it's not. It's the turning chain. The chain two that we did when we turned the row. You don't want to do in that one. See that chain two? That's the one that you don't want to catch when you end the next row after this one. And let me see if I can't crochet some of this up here real quick. Might have to pull some of this yarn out so I don't have to struggle with it. Slide those beads out of the way. Oh, thank you, Brooks. Yeah, we're, we're working with you one of your crochet hooks today. Let me tell you what, girlfriend, I love that topper on there. It helps with my pinky grip so much. And I get a hold of this crochet hook. My pinky is not getting stabbed by the end of this needle in any way, shape, or form. It fits in my hand perfect. Um, I, I could sit here and crochet for hours, I do believe, and not catch a cramp in my hand with this crochet hook. I love it. Well, I'll tell you what, you need to check out Get Crafty Brooks. She commented right below you, Miss Karen. She's got these. And um, I don't know, are you still taking customs or did you get flooded with, uh, with the custom orders already? She's got a large selection of beads and she uses the Susan Bates hooks, which I love so much. I'll show you the difference between those hooks too. The Susan Bates hook to me seems like it just grabs a hold of the yarn better than the boy. 
I really don't care for the boy hooks. I know some people, my sister prefers them boy hooks over the Susan Bates. It all just depends on the crocheter. Um, let me pull these out here really quick and I'll show you the difference in the hook. Pretty much the difference, in, and I'm going to show you on a larger one here, the difference is in just the tip of the hook. This is a Susan Bates hook. Let's see if I can't get that to... And it's got a nice, sharp groove in there. I mean, it's not sharp, but it's it's very defined groove that the yarn goes into. Let me see if I can't get a hold of a piece of this. And you can see that it really, if I can get that camera to zoom in, yes, it really sits right up in there. The boy hooks are rounded. They're not sharp, crisp. And yeah, it'll sit up in there, but I have issues working with these. My hook slips out way too much for me to even be able to get work done. So that's just my preference and my experience with the boy hooks. I do have them. I do have them. I do use them on occasion. But my preferred is the, the Susan Bates hook. Check and make sure we got... Thank you for the follows, guys. Okay. So, yeah, you'll have to check her out. She's got all kinds, and she's got some of the little racier tops, too. Some of the ones that you won't find in the stores, I can tell you that much. So, you customize it to yourself, to your likes. Yeah, she has a, a shop on Etsy. You know, stop in and check her out. She's got some other stuff on there too, I think. You have any any stuffies on there, Brooksy? All right. We're actually going to count this time and see how many we actually do have. And you'll see me turning this hook every which way. I, I deal with the central nervous disorder and sometimes I can hold it a certain way. And then I have to change up and hold it a different way. I don't know why. My, my brain likes to be spontaneous and say, no, we're not going to do it this way today. But we just push through. We persevere. Oh, you finished the mallard. I bet you it is huge. It looked like it was going to be. Well, thank you very much. I think that's... Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. It looks kind of like Marnie. Maybe. But yes, please come back. I do have classes on Tuesdays. Uh, check out my profile. There's some information in there. Tuesday mornings from 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. All right. Just going to keep working on this. And we'll chatter back and forth until I get it to a, at least a decent length to where I can show you guys how to fold it over. This will be another thing that I put. Everything that I that I create and do in my lives, I put in my inventory for sale. Um, still trying to figure out whether I don't think that with my health issues that I could do a small business and be able to keep up with the inventory. Um, I do like to do custom orders every now and then. 
Um, but I, I think I'm more leaning towards doing a, a once a year event. And um, that way I've got the whole year to prepare because sometimes I'm down for a couple days and I don't do anything because my, my brain doesn't want me to or won't let me. But I try to keep going and I might have to adjust this. I've got it too far forward. Just glad that both of the dogs are still quiet. Nobody's here with me today. So they shouldn't jump up barking. Well, you have to hit me up with a message and let me know when will be a good time because I'm going to be going live pretty much. I'm going to try to go every day, health willing. Um, just work on some of the stuff that we're working on and just chitter chatter trying to finish up that smoker's jacket and stuff. But yeah, hit me up with a message and let me know what time works good for you. And I'll see if I can't accommodate because I want to be able to reach as many people as I can. And we're just steady working on this. And it did get wider somehow. Oh, no. Well, not once we block it. I think it's just that first row that went tight. But yeah. I have to do about at least 10 more rows. And yeah, I definitely need to adjust this because I'm way down here on the bottom of the screen. And something else too for the beginning crocheters. I'll show you this really quickly too, but I need to adjust this. There we go. Uh, this hook um, I got from Get Crafty Brooks. She was on here a minute ago. I don't know if she's still in here, um, but she is selling these hooks. Uh, they are the, the Susan Bates hooks. Um, but, yeah, she's, she's doing some customs, too, and she's got a ton of toppers. Oh, there she is. She's here crocheting. Yeah, she's... Um, She's making some of these, and she's got them up for sale. She's on Etsy. Get Crafty Brooks. Jump over and check her out. Hey, girl, I'm coming for my promo fee. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm one of those women that I, I, I try to... I'll, I'll straighten your crown on your head before I'll tell you it's crooked. I'm that type of person. I, I, I'd rather lift people up than put people down. I don't understand that. Yeah. Get this last one. And I do want to show you a little bit about the stitches here for the new newer crocheters. Uh, she did say she was going to have some clover hooks, yes. But I'm not sure if she has any currently. Um, when you're looking at the stitch, you want to go in this little gap here in your stitches. You don't want to catch down here underneath because that will give you big holes in your work. It won't lay flat together. So when you're crocheting, make sure you're going into just the top two loops. And that's the, the, the top little V's there. And you're catching both of them. You can see there that I went through both. That'll give you a flat panel. Um, if you go through just the back loops, which would be just this loop back here, it gives you a nice little rippled ridge. Um, a lot of people use that on the crocheted blankets. Um, that helps with um, trapping heat. So it could be a lighter blanket made out of a lighter weight yarn, but because you added a ripple to it, 
it, it, it makes it warmer. So that's just some things that things that you can add to your work that add texture but also add functionality. Because some people don't like heavy blankets and oof, the printer just automatically shut itself off. I don't know if you heard that or not, but it scared me. But yeah, things that you add to your work that add detail and, you know, grab the eye, but they're also functional. Okay, we got two more stitches to do here on this end. Yeah, I turned it on this morning because I had to um, scan something into my computer. And um, <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. It just scared the, just scared the crap out of me, honestly. Oh. But yeah, I'll do a couple more rows here and then I'll show you how I'm going to turn this into a little you can turn it into a little clutch um, you can turn it into um, a little crossbody bag depending on how you do the handles and here we didn't go through the two loops we tried to go through the bottom getting in a hurry um, depending on how you put the handles on here yeah you can do a crossbody bag with this um, you can do a messenger style bag, all different kinds of bags that you can do. And there's all different kinds of things you can do. We didn't get a hold of that full stitch there. All different things that you can do to jazz it up. Um, I don't know if anybody still uses eyelash yarn. But I've used the eyelash yarn to go around the edge of a blanket to give it like a little furry, fluffy edge. I've used eyelash yarn and fingerless gloves to give a little, a little furry cuff around the wrist. Um, as far as this little clutch, if you wanted to embellish the front flap with a little bit of eyelash yarn, you could do that as well. All kinds of things you can do to give it your own little flair. And if I didn't have this camera boom in front of my face, I think I could crochet a lot faster. But I want to stay on camera so that anybody floating by on TikTok that might see me crocheting and say, hey, I want to see what that is. I don't think they're too interested in just... A plain bare desk. <laughs> so. And for anybody out there running small business and you're posting your items on here, make sure you're using your hashtags. Um, hashtag crochet, hashtag handmade, hashtag fiber arts, if it's ceramics or whatever, you will hit the al algorithm for people who come on TikTok searching for fiber arts or handmade or, you know, whatever you're doing, ceramics, whatever your craft is. Um, make sure you're doing that. Yeah, you can add beads. Um, this, The way I added the beads on here today wouldn't be the optimal way to finish a project in time. Uh, the way I showed is just if you have ran out of all your beads and you still have work and you still need to add beads. Um, because sometimes when I've pre-strung beads on, the, on there, it just, I run out. I didn't put enough on. I think I had enough. I thought I'd have extra left over. And no, it turned out I didn't have enough. So this is just another way that you can, um, and I can see I actually did, you see that hole I created right there? One of those stitches went a little too low. I didn't grab 
I grabbed in the middle. But that goes to show you how that can happen. But anyway, this is how you can add beads if you run out of beads that are being strung, you know, that you strung pre-start. But let's do a few more rows and see if we can't pick the pace up a little bit. And I can show you where to attach on this bag once we get it done to do a messenger bag, um, a clutch. You wouldn't need to put any handle on it at all. Um, cross body bag, how to put the handles on. Um, I can even show you. I, there's all kinds of things I could show you with this project here alone that I could just do all day long. Um, I have those little, what they call safety buckles, the ones that you feed the nylon strap through and they got the little push buttons. They click together. Um, you could crochet straps and put one of those on and have your little crossbody bag, make it adjustable. Uh, use those little snaps and make a fanny pack. Um, all different kinds of things you can do with this. I mean, it's the, the, the possibilities are never ending. I hope you guys stay with me so you can see this bag done. Probably should have prepared a little bit better. Nope, we're going through the bottom and not through the stitch. When I go through the bottom, I can see when I go through the wrong spot, it pulls a big hole. You can see it instead of when you put it in through here, it doesn't pull a hole. So you wonder how crocheters that are flying 50 miles an hour and smoke coming from their hooks see that they've made a mistake. Yeah, it's like hawk eyes. The muscle memory kicks in and says, hey, no, you did that wrong. That wasn't right. Because it doesn't feel right and then it doesn't look right. I amazed my mother the other day because I, my, my sight is getting more and more limited as I get older. I've worn glasses since I was four years old. But um, I can feel a purl stitch and a knit stitch. I know I can feel the difference with my fingers. So if I had somebody read me a pattern, I could probably do it blind. Because I've actually sat there knitted with my eyes closed <laughs> just to see if I could do it. And yeah, I can. As long as I know the pattern. If I don't know the pattern and somebody reads me the pattern, then I can do it. So, as long as I don't lose my memory on how to do knit and crochet, which I really worry about with the issues that I have, um, even if I go blind, I can still do it. Because here I can feel my next stitch. I'm actually feeling for the hole when I go like this. I do this stitch. When I'm pulling here, I'm slipping my fingers over for this next one as I'm pulling this through. So it's almost like a little, you know, if I, if I could slow it down, you could actually see me doing what I'm doing. And I, I do show people what I do and how I do it because it, it might help them say, oh, that's easier than the way I do it. Or that's easier than the way I think it would be done. Welcome everybody who's coming in. Welcome, welcome. Trying to make sure I keep up with any comments that are going on. We're actually working on a little beaded panel here. I showed how to put the beads on if you run out of beads or you're mid project and decide, hey, I wanna throw some beads on there. You know how to put the beads on. Um, if you missed it this time, uh, we'll show it again. Probably not today, but we're gonna work this up a little bit more. Let me see what we got here. Yeah, I need to do at least one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight more rows, and then I can show you what we're turning this into. So as I'm talking about crochet and knit and showing you 
my little techniques here. Trying to stay in camera frame and see around this darn it camera boom. Got to find something different. Maybe I need to have it. I don't think it'd be any different if it was from the other side of the table. I have to position this boom elsewhere so it's not right in front of me. But then if it's not, then my phone's not in front of me and I can't see the comments. And then I have to use a second device on my backup account. Yeah, you can see that too. Thank you, Brooks. But yeah, I have to use my backup account to watch my comments, but then I don't see if anybody wants to multi-guest. So, we have fun. We have fun. Alright, there's almost one of eight that we need. So, while we're waiting for me to get these rows done, what's everybody working on today? Anybody here from actual class working on any corner-to-corners or any granny squares or anything like that? For those of you that are new, I do have a class here on TikTok on Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is the current class. I am on here every day, and I do start out working on my own stuff. But then it turns into almost another class. And people come in, and that's probably just what I'll do. I will have the regular class on Tuesdays, but I'll be here every day, almost like the teacher sitting at the desk. If you have a question, you can come in and say, Hey, can you show me how to do this? Or, Hey, can you help me with this pattern? Oh, granny squares. I, that's what I do with all my little balls of yarn. I have a big glass vase over here that my husband came with uh, two dozen roses in it for Valentine's Day. And it's a beautiful glass vase, and it's tall. And I just throw all my little scrap balls in there, and when it gets full, I take those and I make granny squares. Or if I'm, you know, not having such a great day with the more difficult stuff that I do, knitting and crochet-wise, I'll grab those granny square balls and just make granny squares, a little bit of mindless crocheting. And then I just collect them all in a bag, and once I get enough of them, I do something with them. I actually have in my bio a link. Uh, it's a link tree link. Um, I have a granny square, granny square cardigan layout, um, and I think it goes from an extra small all the way up to a 1X or a 2X. Um, you have to pay attention to the granny square size dictated to get the proper size cardigan, but there is a link for that if anyone is interested in making a granny square cardigan. If you have a bunch of granny squares and you don't know what to do with them. I have a grocery bag full. And I'm trying to get enough done up that before September I can get them sewed together. Because my youngest son, I had made him a granny square blanket when he was younger. And when he moved out from home, he left it for his stepbrother because his stepbrother, I don't know, I guess he thought his stepbrother was going to miss him or whatever. So plus he, you know, he had went into the Marines when he graduated from high school and uh, he left it for his stepbrother. <clears throat> so I'm trying to make him another one, but of course it won't be the, the little three-year-old boy granny square afghan that he got i'll have to make it like uh at least a twin size because he's over six foot thank you for the follows get through these rows here pretty quick 
kind of getting used to the camera being in my face. I tried watching through the camera, but sometimes there's a delay on there, and that really messes with your mind trying to crochet. <laughs> and you know that you've got it in there, but it's not showing that you've put it in the stitch yet. <laughs> so I kind of try not to watch that too much because it drives me crazy. I don't know if anybody else commented. Do we have any other crocheters in here? Or maybe they're counting counting stitches. That's why they're not responding. They're counting stitches. Let's see what we have here now. Yeah, I definitely want it to go at least that big because I folded this down. So let's see, how many rows do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oof, we still got a good bit more to do. But I might cut it off short and make it a little, we'll make it a little kid's bag. That way I can get it to the point to where I can show you. Or it might just be a little messenger type bag that you can wear. Um, you know, you put your keys, your identification in. If you're going out walking or if you're at like a flea market or whatever and you don't want to carry a big purse around, you just need something to hold your money, your ID, your car keys, something small like that. Um, something that just popped into my mind too that I'm going to make some of and I think it's going to be so cute. Um... And I might do it out of embroidery floss just because it's on a smaller scale. They've taken granny squares and made like a little drawstring purse. It's tiny, you know, but it's adorable. And I might make some. I don't know. I might make it out of sport weight yarn. I don't know. I got so much yarn over here. Let me see here. Fold that in half. Yeah, we're just going to make like a little clutch out of this today. I'll do another row or two. Just so that we can move on to something else. You missed how I put the beads on. Oh, Amy. I'll show you. Because I'm going to put one more bead on here. When we get to the other side. I might put two on. We'll see. Because I'm going to use those for my closure. The beads. Might be able to. Might not. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have to do it here soon. So I'm trying to get through this row here. Oh, I'll have to do this row and one more. Actually, two more. We'll put a row of beads on so you can see, but I'll have to get it to the other side. That's one thing you have to be careful of. If you're putting beads on just the flap and the front part of where the flap connects to, you have to make sure that you've got them on the right side. So, taking your time to lay this out, this will be the flap, and we're only going to have it as wide as that. Okay? We don't want to put beads on the wrong side, which means they'll be on the inside. So you have to make sure that you're on the right side when you put your beads on. That's another crafter's nightmare. Making sure we got stuff on the right side, especially when we're folding our work up. So I don't want to put the beads on this side, because if I did they'd be on the inside and you wouldn't see them. So we're going to do through this row. Oh, nope, nope. Through this row really quick, as quick as we can. This stuff in our way. Trying not to hit the camera boom with my crochet hook. And 
how I'm holding my crochet hook is just comfortable for me right now. There's no one right way to hold a crochet hook. And if you've got somebody teaching you a specific way to hold your crochet hook or your needle, you need to get away from them, people. For you to see how I do it, the technique of actually grabbing the yarn, I'm actually twisting my hook as I'm doing it so that when I go through, I've got my yarn and I go through the loop without grabbing any extra yarn. And you can see I came through this way. When I come up this way, I'm going to turn so I can grab this yarn. I'm spinning my hook down so that I can go into this stitch. Again, I'm going to spin, grab yarn, spin so that I'm downward so that I don't catch any other stitches. Here I've spun from this position to this one to come grab this yarn again. That should be what they're teaching you. Okay, not how to hold your hook. Because even though you might try working it the way I'm holding it, I can hold it this way and work it. It just depends on what feels good to my wrist right now. And that's what you're going to discover too. Okay, so we're going to finish up these next couple of stitches. And this last stitch here. Now we're going to put beads on this side and we're going to double check again and make sure that we're on the right side for beads. Okay, this is going to be the flap for the purse, the little top flap. And this piece is going to fold up this way. So we're going to come one row down from the flap. So actually we should have put our beads on long before now because I wanted the beads here on this row. So we're going to do a few more rows and I'll just show you how to put the beads on and then we'll do two more rows and then we can fasten this purse off. I'm working half double crochets. Oh, we got some new messages. Oh, a king size blanket, three strands of yarn. I know, Amy, your hands are hurting. Okay, and I'm getting ready to show you, Amy, if you're ready to stop how to do these beads. Yeah, doing the, um, the, the latch hook. Yeah, it did, you know, learning how to do that. It'll help when you, when you learn how to use, you know, hold when you learn how to use a certain tool and then, you know, you're doing pretty much the same motion with a different tool, it kind of makes it pretty easy. Now I was doing two stitches, um, and then a bead and then two stitches and a bead. So I'm going to see, um, I think we're going to go, let's line them up here. Yellow, then green, then blue, then orange, then that's that pink, pink color, and yellow, green, blue, orange, pink. We need the light pink and then the purple. All right. Now, I'm not sure if we have, let me see if we have a yellow one big enough so I can show you both ways. I'll find one with a big enough hole. That's probably not going to be big enough, is it? All right, now there's two different ways. And this again is when you run out of pre-strung beads on your string and you need to add a couple more. This is just the way you can do it after the fact. Um, we're gonna go through the back loop only. Pull up a loop. Actually for this one, I should have went ahead, put this on. If your bead will fit onto your crochet hook, you can do it this way. If it won't, 
You might not be able to do this one. Trying to work it a little bit because I need my hook. Go down into your stitch and we're going to pull a loop through here. It's kind of tight, but you're going to pull a loop through with your bead on your crochet hook. Okay. Thank you, Kelly, for the roses. I appreciate it. And then that loop, if I can get this to come through, you're going to pull it right through that bead. And I got that on there tight. Make sure it'll fit through your bead, your hook. Okay, and then you have two loops and you're going to pull your yarn through both of those and you have a bead on your work. Okay, I want to do two more half doubles and I'm going to show you how you can do it if your bead will not fit on your crochet hook. You take a smaller crochet hook and you do it. My two half doubles in between my beads. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to go down into your work and pull up a loop, okay? Now, you're going to take a smaller crochet hook. Yeah, the smaller crochet hook for the bead makes it easier. I just wanted to be able to show you how, if it will fit on the crochet hook you're using, how to do it that way as well. We're going to put our yellow bead onto the crochet hook because that's the one we want next. Oh, we already did the yellow one. We picked one up out. We need the green one. And then you put it on the crochet hook. Take your crochet hook, grab your loop. I'm grabbing the bead. Pull that loop right through there, right through your bead. And then with some difficulty, <laughs> you can take it off the crochet hook and then pull it through. And then you just work through both of those loops and you have another bead on your work. And I'll show you this all the way across to here. All right, come on fingers. Fingers don't want to cooperate. Let's try holding it a different way. All right, there's my two. Now, again, we're going to go down into the next stitch Pull up a loop. Take that loop off. We're going to grab our next bead. Oh no, don't go running. This one doesn't want to go on there. Crafter's difficulties yet again. Because the other side had an obstacle. That's why. All right, let me pull this loop out a little bit more. Here we go. We're going to grab a hold of that loop and pull the crochet hook right through the bead. Don't drop it, loop. Okay. And then, again, put that loop back on your crochet hook. I haven't done this in some time, so I'm a little out of practice, but I do remember how to put them on here. Um, you can use this on shawls. Um, if you're using like um, lace weight fabric, you can use seed beads. And we're going to do another bead. And it, it just adds, you know, a little sparkle. Um, if you want to add sequins to your work, same technique. Exact same technique. Because the sequins have a little hole in the top. You have to make sure that your um, yarn will fit through the hole in the top of the sequin. And you can add sequins to your work. Thank you guys for all the likes and all the follows. Yep, doing beads. And again, yes, this definitely would be tedious if we were doing every row like this. So, yeah, you would want to pre-string. And again, this is only if you don't have enough beads strung up. Back on the crochet hook. 
once I get these done, I'll have to do at least two more rows so I come out from underneath my flap or you won't see these beads that I just did. Thank you guys. I appreciate all the likes, all the follows. That through there. Again, I'm trying to stay in camera frame. It's not working out very well for me today. Uh, well, I'm glad I was here to help you with this today. Yeah, I did. I went and looked at some of my videos on TikTok and watched my FYP this morning. And there was a lot with beads, a lot with beads. So I thought, well, let's show some beads. I don't know. Somebody's... I don't know if TikTok's trying to get me to invite people or if people are trying to co-host with me. I don't do co-hosts unless I know who you are. And we are going to take the last purple bead. And then we kind of did a little stripe with our colors on here today. And we got the purple bead on there, and I know that was probably off camera, sorry. But we're trying to get this to the point to where we can have a finished project here. Do a couple more rows of half double. This row is really going to slow me down here because i got to make sure that I catch only these half doubles. And i got to make sure I catch that one where we put the bead on so it'll slow me down just a tiny bit this row only and I'm going through both loops on this one now and I think I might have done some double crochets there we don't want to do doubles but we'll leave them okay Catching all of these across here. Um, if you make headbands, you can add beads to your headband if you so desire. Just a little jazzy jazzy to jazz up your whatever you're making. Add little embellishments, things like that. You know, even through this whole project, I said I was going to count, and I don't think I counted the stitches. I got quiet, but I didn't count, I don't think. I get done this row, I'm going to grab a sip of my coffee, too. Grab that one. That one. Yeah, I don't... Um, co-host simply because a lot of people come in and try to disrupt your video I've heard and I don't want to have anybody come in and be hateful and disrupt class and you know pretty much have to make me shut down the live and have to start up again I don't want to have to do that so I'll do the multi-guest because you know if you get rowdy under the multi-guest I can Say goodbye and let you cool down, but there shouldn't be any any of that. Good morning, self-made Melanie. How are you? No, I won't kick you if you if you if you do if you if you behave, Brooks. <laughs> I'd host with you, I would. I know you. The way I crochet. I kind of get in a rhythm and it's kind of like, you know, you hear the yarn, a little shh, shh of the yarn coming out of the skein. You hear the beads on the table. And um, I'm actually, I was doing this as a demo. Well, this one here, normally I put beads on before I start, but this was a demonstration. 
and I'm going to go ahead and finish this off right here. This was a demonstration. Um, if you run out of beads, normally I would pre-string beads, definitely, but sometimes you don't string enough. And then what do you do? Oh, we've got a half done project and we still need about 10 more beads. You don't want to cut your string. So I was showing how that you could add on extra beads if for some reason you, um, you know, ran out of pre-strung beads and still had to put a few more onto a project. Um, you can always fasten off, cut your yarn, restring on more beads, and then start back up again. But then you got all these ends to weave in because you cut your string. So this is just a way to get around having to do all of that. Unless, you know, you need like a hundred more beads, then, you know, one weave in end might not be a bad thing to have to deal with. Um, this here was the bottom. That is my uh, foundation. That's my starting chain. I probably did do it a little tight, but with a little bit of blocking, that'll straighten right out. Plus, that's going to be the top flap of my purse. And for demonstration purposes, it's, it's yeah, it's good. But now we're going to turn this over and we are going to go to here with this piece. Okay, and this will be the purse portion. This here will be our flap. So you can see our colors are traveling on the diagonal. Right? Now at this point, I'm going to turn this to wrong sides, and I'm going to seam the sides of this purse, but not the flap. I'm just going to seam these. So if anybody was working along with me, we're going to turn this over this way. We are going to get our little yarn needle over here. Handy dandy. I keep my notions in a little ketchup jar. I've got stitch markers in here, needle toppers, um, stitch markers for doing amigurumi, the ones you can slide in and out real easy, uh, knitting stitch markers, a little handy dandy jar. All right, we're going to cut a length of the string that we were working with here and thread up our needle. And that was a real quick thread up. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. Um, I do this for all yarn, uh, string, even for sewing thread. I take it and fold it over the needle, give it a little, give it a little tight pull, pull the needle out, and you see it almost disappears in my finger. Then I lay my needle back over there and just kind of work it down, and it goes right in. Do it for sewing thread too. All right, now we're just going to start sewing this up on this side. I might give this to my granddaughter. And I do put a little knot in here just so that this is secure so that even if it does come loose, your purse doesn't start to pull away from itself. Okay. And then I will sew over this loose thread so I don't have to go back and weave it in later. And I just do a simple little whip stitch right here on the edge, making sure to catch more than just one string on the sides. We're catching a little... A little clump off the front and the back just a tiny little clump make sure to wrap this back over that way and I just stitch right down through there keep stitching over that Oh, you missed the instructions. I'm sorry. I'll have to show it again, I guess. It'd be easy because I can take it out. I'm going to have to probably do some type of schedule where I can tell you what I'm going to do. Um, also, 
um, what I'll probably do, I do upload all of my lives to YouTube. So if you did miss the beadwork, because if I keep going back, we'll never get on to the next because everybody, the people are going to keep coming in and out of here. Yes, all of my lives I do upload to YouTube. Um, there is a link in uh, TikTok, in my TikTok um, for my YouTube channel. And you can follow and subscribe and you'll see all the videos that come through. So if you miss me on TikTok, because I can be on here any time of day. Um, sometimes I'm up two or three o'clock in the morning, can't sleep. I might get up and do a live then. Um, I try not to take time away from my family. So I'm not on too much in the evenings, TikTok live. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much homebound and I, this is what I do. But yeah, everything, all of my videos, all my lives are, are uploaded to TikTok. So I'm going to say we're not going to do another set of beads today. It might be something that we do on another project. But yeah, as soon as I get done with this live, I will have to wait for it to process. And then I will upload it. So it'll be there. And it'll be under, I think I titled this C to C and um, Beaded Crochet, I think. So that'll be the title that I have it over there on YouTube too. Oh, I didn't mean to pull that through like that. We gotta stop that because we're gonna fasten this off here. And the way I fasten things off, I put it through as if to do a whip stitch and I'll hold that loop with my finger. I'll go through that loop and then I'll take my finger and stick it over here in this other loop that I'm creating right here so that I catch it before it goes too tight and then I run my string back through it again Okay, and then I just pull it tight. There are a, p a couple of people. My I my ID on YouTube is the Yarnologist. Um, I do have a direct link in my TikTok bio. So if you go to my TikTok, um, you'll you'll have a direct link to it. Because like I said, there are a couple of people called the Yarnologist on YouTube, but I do use the same um, icon that is up here in this upper right corner. And I think it's the underscore yarnologist for YouTube. It might have capital letters. I'm not sure. But there is a direct link in my bio for that. So that you can see that once I get these all uploaded. Okay, now we're going to come over here to the other side. We're going to make sure that these line up with our stitches underneath. Because we don't want to, you know, do one of these things. So we're going to make sure that it lines up across the row. It might dip a little bit here because of the weight, but we're going to make sure that it, you know, it lines up with the same row on the edges. And this will just come when it does. Okay, so we're going to come back here. Start in this corner. Get these fastened on here. And I might have to grab something to eat. I have issues with blood sugar and uh, I'm feeling a little wonky right now. Probably need to eat. And I don't know if you can hear my little dog. He's underneath the table right here snoring his butt off. He snores like an old man. Loud. But he's my buddy. Yeah, I've got like six or seven projects going right now, and most of them are knit. But when I get those done, I'll be doing some smaller things here. Definitely going to be on here teaching different things. And if there's anything that anybody who's here would like to see, um, I can demonstrate uh, if you're having pattern issues, I can help you with that. Um, I'm just here to be helpful. It's what makes me happy. It's what brings joy to my life. Helping other people, you know. So, 
I appreciate every single last one of you. Honestly, I do. Because if not, I would just be sitting here listening to Pandora endlessly, mindlessly, just trying to figure out what to do next. So y'all help give my TikTok direction. All right, we almost got this sewed up here. And we're going to make this for a little girl's purse, but I will show you where to attach on here if you wanted to make this like a crossbody bag. So you didn't have anything dangling if you were going to be in a crowd of people. Um, it would it would fit tight to your to the front of your torso. Go across your shoulders, you know, like a crossbody bag style. Should have cut some of this yarn off because I pulled way too much out to sew with. Tighten that right up and take this and work this end over a couple of stitches. And I should have, I should have pulled this. Oh no, that's my thing. I've got another string there. I should have pulled it back the other way so I could have sewed over it. But because it's caught in there, I can probably just cut it off. Set that over out of the way, and now we're going to turn this right side out. Be sure to put your corners out there so you got your nice, sharp little corners. You got the front of your bag. You weave in the, this end real quick, and this other one over here I'm going to cut off because I caught it in the sewing portion. I work it through a couple of these loops here on the edge, and then I'll work it down through one of these downward stitches and work it down a couple more stitches here just work it down through the loops that are on the back side of your fabric you don't want to work it in too long of a stretch because then you know when you're using your purse you um can pull out the weave in and I'm going to go back this way a couple of stitches which just gives it a little more what I call torque so it's a little harder to pull out I hold it snug back here when I'm pulling it back the other way so I don't draw the stitch up as I pull the yarn through because we don't want to compress our uh, project here okay and then we'll just cut that right off okay and this one because it's caught in the seam I'm going to go ahead and just give it a snip then we have our little our little bag now what I was contemplating doing, and I probably could do it, um, is trying to make a little closure to wrap around this bead in the middle here so it would close. And that would just be attaching a string here, doing a couple of chains so it comes down and around this. And you can do a couple of them. You can do one on this side or do two here to keep it shut. Now, as far as turning this into a, a little child's purse, we're just going to take and graft on to these corner stitches here where your purse comes together towards the outside, not towards the top edge or the inside, but towards the outside so it doesn't mess with your closure flap. And just come in here and, and grab a couple, do a couple single crochets right here and you can do a band, you know, two stitches, single crochet all the way up and around as long. Yeah, add a little chain and you have a little purse. 
but we're probably going to leave this just like a little clutch. I think I might fold that down like that and that just be a little surprise beads for decoration on the front. And I'm just going to leave that like a little clutch change purse. And I probably will do some kind of closure down here on this end. But yeah, well, we just did a little purse. We got enough room in there. You can probably fit a cell phone in there, a small one. Yep, definitely fit your ID in there, your cash in there. You can put change in there, it won't fall through. It's not the whole none of the holes are big enough for change to fall through. Um, you can also line this if you wanted to before you stitch it up. Cut a piece of fabric, turn it under, do a little blind stitch all the way around your piece, and then fold it up and sew it. When you do that, you have to come in a little bit on your fabric here and leave a little edge so that you can have the stitches to sew it together if you wanted to line it. But yep, there you go. And you got a little beaded bag. Yeah, we'll put this in our little our little bin for our, our market. I'll have to figure out if I want to put a chain on it. Um, I can actually get the little lobster claws and actually put a jewelry chain. Blind stitch. Okay. When you do blind stitch, you actually have two pieces of material. It's more so for sewing. I don't know if I have, I don't have any material over here. But I can kind of demonstrate, I have a little bit of a plastic bag here. Okay, on blind stitch, this is a little plastic bag. You would put two pieces of fabric together, okay? And a whip stitch, you would just... For a whip stitch, you would go through top to bottom and come up and around the other side and come back in top and bottom. You're going to see those stitches wrapped around the edge of your material. Blind stitch, you actually go in between the two pieces of fabric and you, let me see, make sure I can get you on camera here. You grab in here just under the edge and the fabric is actually folded over. So you're only catching half of the fabric on this side like this. And then you'll come over on this side and you'll catch it just inside the top here. So your stitches stay to the inside. You don't have wrap around stitches on the outside. They're back and forth on the inside and you don't see the wrap stitches. That's blind stitch. That's more so for sewing um, fabric. But you can use it on this. The blind stitch, you would actually fold your fabric like this. And instead of doing a whip stitch where you would go down through and come up and around and go back down through the same side, you would catch inside of here just a little bit like this on this side. Pull your yarn through, then come over here on this side. Catch a little bit, pull your yarn through, then you'll come up here a little bit. It'll pull these two pieces together, but you won't have that whip stitch edge. Now, because I turned this inside out and stitched it and then turned it right side, you don't have that whip stitch. So blind stitches when I guess, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to turn it inside out. Oh, if you're doing two pieces of fabric, let me grab a piece of fabric and I'll show you here because you don't want the whip stitch to show, or maybe you do. If you like the look of the whip stitch, maybe you would want it to show. Um, just trying to find a small clip of fabric. And I don't really have a small clip of fabric, but we're going to improvise. I just grabbed some scrap fabric. Let me see if I can find a little corner here and we'll show you what we mean by line stitch. You don't want this raw edge, okay? So when you blind stitch, I would recommend folding this back over and doing a little iron on it, put a press, but you're only gonna fold it over, not even a quarter of an inch, okay? And then when you, if you're gonna line your fabric, you put this together with this, 
okay? And you've got your edge turned down there. Let me get my camera to come in. And so you don't see the whip stitches on the edge of this fabric for your lining. And you can do this for blankets as well. If you want to line a baby blanket, you can do that. You're going to come in here like this. And you're going to catch just the tiniest little bit just below that seam line. And you're going to pull your yarn through. Actually, you would be sewing this with regular sewing thread. Okay? So you would pull through there on that side. And then when you come through on this side, you do the same thing. You grab a little bit just below the edge and pull through. And then over here, you come up a little bit further and pull this through. And you don't see the whip stitch. So if you want it to look seamless without a whip stitch, you would do the blind stitch. Okay? And that way, it just looks like these two are put together. Um, you won't see the stitching because when it comes together, this is what you'll see, this and this folded edge. All the stitching is in between the two pieces of material just below the surface. So if you like to see stitches, whip stitch works just fine. If you don't like to see stitches, you'd want to use blind stitch. And, you know, you could line the inside of your work. I have lined baby blankets. I have taken and made a cabled baby blanket and lined it with fleece to make it extra warm. So if, you know, you have, you have to go out and you want to cover over the baby's car seat, you've got that blanket with fleece. It will keep the baby really warm if you're in cold, cold climates. But yes. Um, I'm going to keep going for a little while. Um, I had also wanted to show the corner to corner. Yeah, pretty border that you don't want to mess up with stitches. That would be an idea to use the blind stitch. You, you, uh, you live and learn by doing crafts and, you know, people who have been sewing for years might not know the blind stitch or crocheting for years might not know how to line projects because they've never done it. There are so many aspects to crochet that I don't think that there's anybody out here that knows absolutely everything because things are changing every single day. So we're going to set this to the side and I'm going to clean up these beads here real quick and put them back into the container before I end up hitting them and knocking them everywhere. I have a big old container of all different, now we're going to drop them in the floor. <laughs> At least they're wooden beads. They won't hurt the dogs. Hopefully the paint's not toxic. But yeah, I will pick that one up out of the floor. I won't leave it there for them to get it. Oh. Yeah, I got um, a big mega tub of wooden beads. I didn't know what I was going to use them for. And dang it, I still have not brought it back down here. Um, actually, I got it for these bigger beads because I actually made a crochet hook out of wood. Out of a wooden dowel, a J-size crochet hook. I wanted to see if I could make one, so I did. So, we're going to set this off to the side and... Um, Go on to, and I'm definitely going to have to make sure to have that crochet hook down here because now I want to go all the way upstairs, but I don't want to leave the desk unattended with the live on. So I definitely will bring it down and I will have it the next live. Um, I might go back on live later on after my hubby calls at 1030 today because he's working overtime and I don't have anything to do. So I definitely will be back on later today. But I wanted to try and show the corner-to-corner -corner crochet before I go as well. Um, is there anybody here who is interested in corner-to-corner? -corner? Anybody who's done corner-to-corner? -corner? So I'm going to put this away, and I'm going to show you some of the corner-to-corner -corner that I have done. Oh, I had the little block down here, and I moved everything around. 
I'll show you a block that I've done. Um, and I'll show you C to C today. Actually, I have <laughs> I have a a phone holder that is flexible, not one of the gooseneck ones. It's one that's actually almost works like a scissor jack type thing, and that's the only way I can think to explain it. I'll have to do a video for you so you can see how I have my desk set up. Actually, I am sitting just behind where my hands are. So to this side of me, I have this side. <laughs> I have a thing that holds my cell phone. Um, it's adjustable. I can put it in many different positions. And the cell phone is between my face and my desk. I bet I probably only have six inches between the bottom of this phone holder and my chin. So I'm right all up in this right now. <laughs> so. Well, I'm kind of leaning off to the right hand side. Yeah, it's kind of hard to record around a tripod, but for me to see my comments because my tablet doesn't always um, want to cooperate, and it is older. I need to get some more updated equipment to be able to do all of this. But yeah, I'm just using an Android cell phone. Um, I'm using what I have. I'm a little thrifty when it comes to spending money on things that I don't need. Let's just show you this one. I don't know if anybody has seen the um, the gnome crochet graph can that um, Repeat Crafter has put out. Um, I've done some of those squares, and actually a group of us girls have done some. And we are putting them together to give to another one of the girls in our group. And I'm hoping that she's not in here right now. But this is one of them. Let me bring this up a little bit more so you can see the whole thing. And it's actually a corner to corner, almost graph gan type. And I'm going to show you. And yes, there is one of these for every month. This one was the Easter one. Um, and trying to keep some of my stuff organized here. If not, I have a desk pile full of stuff that I have to put away after, and it never hardly ever gets put back where it belongs. I know where it's at. Don't organize my mess, right, crafters? I know where it's at. Don't organize my mess. Um, we're going to do a little corner to corner. I'm going to show you stripes. Uh, which shows you the corner-to-corner -corner technique plus the color change. The one bad thing about corner-to-corner, -corner, if you have a lot of color changes, you're going to have a lot of ends to weave in. So if you don't like weaving ends, corner-to-corner -corner might not be for you. <laughs> Some of those that I have done over there, the um, gnomes, um, it, it, it looked like a... A scrap yarn barrel had went kaboom. There were so many ends to weave in. I'm trying to get this unknotted here because I've moved this around a couple of times. And I just have some ranch red here, which is worsted weight yarn. And um, I think this is a dusty rose, might be, along that line. Let me take care of this too before I end up stabbing myself because this yarn needle, this yarn needle is sharp. It's a sharp one. What's that that needs to be done on a t-shirt? That little um, gnome? Oh, you haven't done a graph can either? Oh, we got all kinds of things I can show you now. See, this is what I like for people to comment on what they haven't done and what they'd like to learn and that is how I want to run my TikTok tailored to what other people want to learn now there's going to be some stuff that I want to learn and we can learn together but that's what I want to do yeah don't organize my mess yes that needs to be on there with like a crafter's desk with five pairs of scissors 
three tape measures, uh, crochet hooks, and neat, knit needles galore on the front of a shirt. That would be a, would be a good one. Grab another sip of coffee here. The sugar and the creamer is helping me out this morning, so I don't have to get off and go eat right now. But I will here probably around 10 o'clock, so we got about a half hour. And then I, I think probably around noon, between 11 and noon, I'll probably come back on. Probably not till afternoon. I want to holler at my friends for a little while, see what they're doing. So thank you for the follows. Thank you for the follows. A bucket hat. I have not made a bucket hat, but we'll find a pattern and we'll make a bucket hat. Do you have time today, Debbie? I'm writing down names here. And things that they want to see done so that I can make sure that I don't forget anything. But yes, if you have a particular bucket hat pattern, um, send me a link for it. And um, how to do, how to better do surface crochet for names or designs. You're talking about duplicate stitch? Or are you talking about like crocheted intarsia as you do it as you go? Or like almost like a graph can? Surface crochet. Yeah, if you have a pattern, um, I don't know if you, you might be able to put the link in here or give me the name of the pattern and where you found it and I can pull it up. And um, when I come back on today, we can, we can do a bucket hat. Because yes, definitely 1030 I have to be off. I, my husband calls to check on me, make sure I'm all right. For the knitting lessons, you're trying to learn, but it's not going great. All right, Riff, um, let me write your name down here. Um, what are you actually having problems with on the knitting portion? Are you having issues with the cast on? Are you, you know, from the start, have you done, oh, you're talking about like, okay, we've got several different conversations going on. Self-made Melanie, you're talking about the um, crocheting on the top. I don't do a whole lot of that because I've not been very successful with that um, as far as crocheting. But doing stitching on top of that, I've been pretty okay. Um, one thing that I would suggest if you want to stitch on top of crochet is um, you can take like tissue paper, draw out what you want to do on top of your crochet, pin that tissue paper to your crochet and actually sew, do like embroidery stitches over what you've drawn and then you just pull the tissue paper away. Um, as far as knitting, you can do that with like, um, waist canvas. Um, Adia cloth has a waist canvas that, um, you pin down onto your fabric. You can embroidery over the top of that waist canvas. And then the waist canvas, something happens when you wash it, that it makes it loose and you just pull the strings out top and bottom. Um, Okay, you're housebound just like me. Yeah, I don't go out very often. I don't like to go out. It's too peopley out there. Okay, uh, Riff, do you have time today? Because if you do, we can do a cast on today. Um, I can show you the specific knit stitch. Um, you can try a couple of rows of that. I will work with you and we'll go through it slowly. Um yeah, you can also, you can do tissue paper. You can do wax paper if you don't have tissue paper. Something that tears away easy. I wouldn't recommend using plastic wrap because it just moves around too much. But um, tissue paper or wax paper, you can pin down onto any fabric. Adia cloth, t-shirts, um, denim jackets, jeans. Um, and, and you can draw on there, whatever you want to draw on, and just embroider over it with um, embroidery floss, sewing thread of different colors. Um, yeah.
Okay, yeah, you have intention issues, uh, Riff, with your knitting. On well, Riff, you're a stay-at-home mom and you got nothing but time. Okay, we will do a knitting portion today, and I will let you guys know that 12 o'clock, I will start the live for that, um, and we will do knitting, strictly knitting, um, at 12 Okay, I can show you how to identify your knit and purl stitches for sure. Um, Self-made, Melanie, if you put it down, you forget it. it once you start knitting, unless you have short-term memory issues like I do, um, and I'm, I'm also starting to have some issues with some long-term memory. So you'll see me fuddling around, but, you know, I, I do eventually get it, and <laughs> it's fun. Um but yeah, sometimes I'll go to the bathroom after knitting and crocheting for over 40 years and come back and be like, oh, what the heck was I doing? Or something doesn't look right and I have to look at it for a while and actually it is right. Um, yeah, I have days like that and I, I just don't knit. So, um, Debbie, we'll see if we can't find a bucket hat and we'll put that on the end of the knit class. Um, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So currently right now where I'm at in the state of Pennsylvania, it is 935. So 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I will be back on to do knitting. Um, Karen, if you'd like to join me, if you, um, yeah, we'll do the cast on, uh, the knit stitch. Um, I'll show you the, the, the technical ways of actually, you know, performing the stitch so you know of every aspect, aerial view, top view, if you're looking to see where your needles are, all of that. But we'll go ahead and start with the corner to corner because we have about 25 minutes and I can show you briefly the corner to corner. We can pick it back up after noon, but at noon we will start off with the knitting portion since we've done all crochet this morning. So I'm just going to make a little slip knot. Um, I don't know if you've seen how people make slip knots. They, you can do like this and then pull this loop through, which is pretty much what I do with the needle. I hold it on my ring finger, wrap it around these two. On the back side facing me, I will cross it over as an X, and then I turn my hand this way. Okay, you're an hour behind me. So 11 o'clock your time will be 12 o'clock. Is that right? My time. Yes. So 11 o'clock your time, Riff, in Tennessee. It'll be 12 o'clock here. I'll make sure you're in before I start. Uh, knitting needles, we can discuss all of that in class. It depends on the yarn you're working on. If you're using a yarn that's kind of slippery like silk, you might want a wooden needle because it will really slide on a metal needle. But you, you have to, the needles aren't so much what you prefer, it's what the yarn prefers. Because you don't want mohair hanging up on a wooden needle. So you definitely don't want to use mohair or wooden needles on mohair because it'll just shred your yarn. Sliding up and down, that friction. So basically it's what the yarn likes. And I have wooden and metal. Um, I do recommend that when you start learning, you start off on metal needles, um, even metal crochet hooks, simply because it slides through the yarn so much better. And if you knit with a tight tension, trying to start off with a wooden needle, you're going to have a hard time with your stitches. So it just, the metal, the smoothness just assists you in the stitches. That's all. That's the difference in, you know, the knitting needles or crochet needles. Okay, make sure I'm keeping up. Yeah. Is that Melly? Melly crochet? Yeah, I'm here to help with anything. Knitting, crochet, patterns. Um, I do needlepoint. I also do um, beaded bracelets on a bead loom. I do all kinds of stuff. I just like all kinds of stuff. And I'm here to help you with anything. If I don't know how to do it, I will do my best to learn how and help you at the same time. We can do it together. So, and I just like, I just like to share, but we're going to do this, um, 
slip stitch here. I go underneath this one, pull the second one, give it a little twist, let go of everything, snug it up. You got a slip stitch. I do it this way simply because if I don't like the way the work's turning out, slip stitch comes out easy. You don't have a knot in your work that you have to cut out or try to fiddle out because you don't want to cut your yarn. So now for corner to corner crochet, which is what we're getting ready to do, um, I use the hook recommended by the yarn label. So for those of you that might be new to knitting crocheting um, on your yarn label, let's see if I can't get this to come in, you're going to have your yarn weight. It's going to tell you, let's see if I can get this to, it's going to tell you the recommended size needle for knitting, the recommended size hook for crochet, and it's going to tell you the temperature you should wash it at. This means you can dry it. If there's a line through there, it means you can't dry it. And this means no iron because acrylic will melt if you iron it. It's, it's made out of plastic. So this is all the information on your yarn needle. You can see it here. Other information in different languages written out. Um, but yeah, I use the recommended hook size if I'm just doing like a blanket or a corner to corner or a graph gan um, I go by the recommended size now if the pattern dictates size I will use that size um, only if it's going to mess with the size of the project like for clothing you want to make sure to use do a gauge swatch and we'll talk about gauge swatches later on you definitely want to do a gauge swatch if you're doing clothing and if you knit what was that Debbie where is the weight okay yep I will definitely be back at 12 knitting beginner yep you, tension you're just going to have to oh I don't know what your name is BZZY mom Busy mom, I guess. I'm just going to call you busy mom. I hope that's right. Yeah, tension will come as you go. Was that, where's the weight of the yarn, Debbie? Um, that's listed on the yarn label. You will, um, on this yarn label, this is a Red Heart, Red Heart yarn label. Um, on the back of the yarn label, you'll see a little a little skein, and it says four. This is for the worsted weight. And this is just a label that I've kept to show this so that I can teach you this portion of knitting and crocheting so you know what all of this is for. Um, on my other yarn that I was using earlier that I set over here, each label is set up a little differently, but it's all got pretty much the same. This is a two weight. It tells you what the what the yarn is made out of. You can machine wash and dry it. Um, here it tells you the recommended sizes for knitting and how many stitches will be in an inch if you knit to the same tension as they do. Uh, crochet hook, what size, how many single crochets are in four inches so if you need to do a little bit of math to figure out sizing that's what this is for and we'll discuss that part later but anyway for the corner to corner crochet okay we'll probably do a gauge swatch later on <clears throat> but if it so happens which one who who was oh Okay, let me write your name down over here too. That way, if I do it and you're not here, um, I can do, um, I can tag you in a video. Um, I do, for those new coming in, all of my lives do go on to YouTube. Um, I do label them by what uh, we are discussing that day. And, um, they, they get uploaded to YouTube the same day. I try to do them the same day. So if you miss something, you can go back. 
Oh, you've got an Addy machine. I have an Addy machine well uh, as well. So if you don't know how to use that, that can be another another live that we can do. But not today. <laughs> not today. But yes, anybody who cannot be here, I have a little list over here of people to shout out when I start doing certain things. Um, if it comes down that I'm going to do a live, I will try to hit you up a couple of days prior. I will try. And um, that way through a message in TikTok, hey, I'm going to be doing this on live. Um, you don't know how to use the Addy Debbie. I'm trying to keep up with all of these conversations. But yeah, I'll try to, to shout out to everybody. And if you do follow me and I put out a video, it will let you know that, you know, I put out a video and I will try to tag everybody in that video who wants to know about that. You know, I'm trying to get on a schedule, but as far as my health is concerned, sometimes the schedule doesn't work out so well. So, and we're going to push past 10 o'clock a little bit because we haven't even started this corner to corner yet. I'm going to show you the basics real quick of the corner to corner, and I will show you a color change for one row, and that might run us right up to time. Um, once you've secured your yarn onto your hook, you're going to chain five. Again, I'm using worsted weight yarn, and I'm using a 3.75 millimeter hook, which is, which is a US F or size 5. I've chained 5. Five. Now, the third chain from the hook, I'm going to bring this up really close, okay? This is one chain right here, this V, chain 2, and the third chain right here. Okay, we're going to go into this one right here. I do half doubles, so I'm going to yarn over and we're going to do half double crochets in these. Okay, so we're going to go into that stitch, pull up a loop, and a half double crochet, we're going to go through all three loops that are on that crochet hook. Okay, so yes, Debbie, I definitely will be back on at 12 and we'll do some knitting. Okay, and we're going to go to the next stitch, which is this one here, and we're going to do a half double in that one as well. Okay. And then the next stitch, which is the last one, we're going to do a half double in there as well. Okay. Now we come up with something that looks like a little wonky rectangle, rounded rectangle type thing. From this point, we're going to chain five. Oh, somebody joined in blue. Skittles Bulldog, I think that was. I don't know. All kinds of stuff popping up here on my TikTok screen that I have no idea what's going on. But anyway. Okay, again, we're going to go down to the third chain from the hook. One, two, three. This one right here. And we're going to half double in that one. And we're going to do half doubles in the next two. Okay, so the next stitch is here. I'm going to make sure that you guys can see that really well because the next stitch almost looks like it's part of the bottom stitch, but it's not. It's kind of hanging out there in the middle, and it's that one right there. Okay, so we're going to do a half double into that one right there as well. All right, now we have something that looks like this. And we need to connect these together. So for the corner to corner, okay? And I, I like to say this to everybody. Corner to corner, you're working from one corner to the other corner. So you're working on the diagonal. And corner to corner, because you have to put these corners together, this corner up here on your hook with this corner down here. So we're going to take this corner. Thank you for subscribing. We're going to take this corner here and we're going to flip it up to this corner here, this way. We're just gonna flip it straight up like that. And we are going to go into the space right here that was created by the stitch. You should be able to lay your crochet hook right on there and feel that right straight through. We're gonna slip stitch to join these two together, okay? Just slip stitch. And then it's gonna look like this, okay? Now, we need to do our next square. So at this point, we're gonna chain two. 
chain two. Okay. And then in that same space right here where you see where we connected right there in that same space, we're going to put three half double crochets in that little gap right there. Okay. Which is the top of this little square. So we're going to do our three half doubles. There's one. Two. Again, we're pulling through all three loops on the hook for a half double crochet. Okay. And three. And if you're following along and you're doing this with me and I'm moving a little too fast, hey, hey, slow down. Um, we're doing a corner to corner demo, Coffee Bean 33. And um, it just says user 597 and a bunch more numbers. Um, my YouTube is located, a direct link for my YouTube is located in my TikTok bio under the little link tree. Um, I post in there patterns that we have done, um, links to my YouTube uh, links to um, Facebook Messenger if you need to get a hold of me with a picture that you need me to help you with something. Um, my Instagram is on there if you'd like to check because a lot more of my stuff is on Instagram that I haven't got transferred over to TikTok yet. And a direct link for my YouTube. So that way... All the lives that I do, I do upload to YouTube, so they are there for you to watch for future reference. Um, I will try to not date them anymore and actually put in there the description of what is actually gone over in that class. I'll do my best. I'm not really good at all of that stuff, labeling and all. But at this point, we have what looks like a little L or a little boot. Uh, we are going to chain five. Okay, and something that I will do when I teach you these techniques, there will be little things that we make from these that you can use as soon as you're done. And as we're making these, I will do the very detailed instructions so even the beginner will be able to follow. If I go too fast, please put a little comment in there. I try to pause in between each direction. So if you are following along, you can do it this way. Um, I don't do co-host and live if I don't know who you are, but if you have issues and you multi-guest, if I don't see your multi-guest, please just throw a multi-guest comment up in the comments. I see that scrolling more so than the little flashing guest thing down at the bottom. So I can help you that way as well. Um, again, we're going to go to the third chain from the hook. And I'll bring this up here so you can see me count the chains. This one being one, two, you see the little V's there for the chains, and three. So we're going to go into this one right here. Half double crochet. Go into that one. And for those of you who might be a little more seasoned crocheters, I am only using the back loop when I do this. I'm not going through two loops. I'm only going through one, as you can tell just the back loop here when I go in just the back loop okay now we have our three double crochets and again we look like this and we need to connect it together so this piece that we've already worked is going to get flipped up towards your crochet hook okay and you are going to slip stitch into the square right next to the one you just did so let me get a hold of my working yarn and not my tail. And right in here in this stitch, when we flip this up, in between those stitches where you did your chain two and started your first half double, that little gap right there is where you're going to slip stitch to join them together. And you're going to chain two, waffle stitch. Okay. Um, peanut butter we're getting ready to go off of here shortly after I show a little bit more of this I want to show how to do a color change but um yes I will keep you write your name down here um I will be back on today but we are going to do um we're going to be doing knitting but yes I can demonstrate the waffle stitch um, we won't do it today though. 
because like I said, I'm coming up on time. My husband calls me at 1030, so I can be here until 1030. We're going to do three double crochets in that gap. I'm sorry. I'm just moving right on along, trying to keep an eye on the time. If I don't answer the phone, my husband leaves work to come home because he thinks there's something wrong. So, okay. And then once we got that done, I'm just going on along. Um, we are going to slip stitch into this square right next to it. Okay. And then we're going to chain two. And we're going to put three double crochets in that gap right where we did that slip stitch to join them together. Yes, definitely. I definitely will. Um, we might not do the striping on the on the corner to corner yet so that I can show her the waffle stitch. I did do this corner to corner in um, the last one that I did. I know that everybody wants to see it and I might just take a whole day. Or when I come back today, we might do the waffle. Well, I'm going to do the waffle stitch before I get off of here. I'll be pushing close to 1030. But does this help with the corner to corner at this point? Does everybody kind of grasp it a little bit? Thank you, Mimi Misty, for the follow. Welcome, welcome, everybody coming in. We're doing a little corner to corner no actually I I might have threw a couple double crochets in there but they should have all been half doubles yeah that one was a double should have all been half doubles yeah it looks like little stairs so yes I can show this more on another day because today we're kind of just all over the place um, I will dedicate certain time slots for certain things and then, you know, you can always go back in the live and look. Um, something that I am going to be doing too, um, peanut butter, is um, I'm going to be doing videos with just, hopefully I can do a stitch tutorial in three minutes. Um, if not, I'll just keep doing lives and keep showing in stitches and things like that. Um, I was trying to figure out how I could do, and we'll set this aside for now, and I'm going to have to look up the waffle stitch because it's not one that I do a lot of. And we will assist you with that. Uh, I don't want to look at my pins. I'm looking on Pinterest here. We'll find a waffle stitch. And I'll show you that one as well. Okay, this one here looks like it is, oh, they have a knit waffle stitch too, but it doesn't look as good in the knit as it does crochet. Okay. I'm pulling up a pattern here. Yeah, later on, we'll definitely, we'll do some stuff. Debbie, we'll, we'll do a bucket hat. Oh, this one's not loading up very well. What's going on here in my tablet? I don't know why that one doesn't want to open up. We find another that's knitted. They have a waffle stitch blanket pattern on here. We can do the waffle stitch from that. I also did show a Tunisian crochet. Now maybe my tablet's just slow. Probably. It's going to take me a minute. So while we're waiting for that to load up, I'll show you another row on the corner to corner. Um... Okay, um, I will see, um, I'll send you a couple of links, um, Debbie, I'll see if I can't send you a couple of links through a TikTok message, if you can get them that way, um, for bucket hats. Um, do you have access to Pinterest, Debbie? 
if you have access to Pinterest and I give you a direct link Ravelry too yeah tons of free patterns on Ravelry I use Ravelry Pinterest um I try to stick to the free patterns for classes because I don't want to incur a, a whole lot of costs for anyone else. So I know times are tight now. Um, I try to keep it, you know, minimal to none. So that way everybody can do it no matter what your income. And this is just not coming up. What the heck is going on with my tablet? I might have to turn it off and turn it back on. It hasn't been turned off in a while. Let's do that. And I'll show you some more of this corner-to-corner -corner peanut butter. I definitely will get the, the waffle stitch um, if you're on here later today. And I'm chaining five again. Um, make sure that's five. I'm talking and trying to count. doesn't work very well. Two, three, four, five. That was six. And let me see here if we can get it to come back up again. Yes, the free patterns. We try to. I try to keep them free as possible. Um, Ravelry. If you go on Ravelry.com, you can search bucket hats. Um, you can just search bucket hats in your Google search engine. Um, crocheted pattern. Bucket hats, crocheted pattern. And it should, um, oh shoot. All right. Hopefully it'll bring it up now. But yeah, after you chain five, you're going to go to the third chain from the hook. Try and stay on, on task here. Um, Ravelry does have some free patterns. Um, you can find free patterns on um, linebrand.com. I go there too. Um, basically, I do a Google search for what I want to make, and then I look through what it brings up, where all it's at, and then I go to the free pattern. Okay, here we have, again, we have to turn it up, attach it to this one here. And I can actually go through some of these with you guys and just do the, the whole project if you want. Chain two together. Not necessarily the whole project, but, you know, get you started. Three double crochets where you joined. Okay. Then you go to the next square. You find that little, that little gap where that chain two made the little gap between your stitches and you're going to slip stitch chain two this is why i turn this down because i end up stabbing through that all the time three double crochets in the same space where you joined or uh, not double crochets half doubles i'm sorry this doesn't work out very well in single crochets simply because the squares are too small so it's either half doubles or doubles that they normally do it in Yeah, YouTube sometimes has tutorials on things, too. Yeah, you can watch those if you got somebody. And then we're chaining two and three more doubles, or three more half doubles. Sorry. Half doubles. And you've got your little steps again. Now, I'm going to hold on to this so that I can show you the color change. I'm trying to get this, let's see if we can get this waffle stitch to open up. Yeah, my tablet just needed to be restarted. Okay. Let's come down here. Okay, this is telling me to, this is for a blanket, so we're not going to chain 135 stitches. Um, we're going to chain a certain number of stitches and we're going to do what it says to do. And I will show you. 
And it's actually only a two row repeat. You have your actually three. Um, basically you're doing a bunch of front, front post double crochets. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put our yarn on here. Peanut butter, are you still in here? I hope she's still in here because we're getting ready to show this waffle stitch. Is she still here? Okay, we're going to secure our our um, yarn onto our hook, and I'm going to do about ten. Nine, ten. I have a blanket pattern here, waffle blanket pattern, um, and it is a free pattern on Pinterest. Um, and we're going to be doing front post double crochets. Actually, it has you doing a foundation chain, which I can show you that too, but we'll show you that at another time. So actually I have to go ahead and work, do one more, work a row of, what are we doing? Double crochets across this starter chain and then we will be able to I'll show you the waffle stitch it's a front front post double crochet when it talks about the front post you're going to go in through the front and around the post okay so we're almost to one more stitch after this one. Yeah, she's here. She said she was here. Okay, so we've basically done a chain of 10 and we've double crocheted back over that chain for 10 stitches. Actually, we did a little more. Yeah, this is the waffle stitch, Debbie, that we're working on right now. Okay, so what I did was I chained 10, actually 11, and then the second chain from the hook, and I did double crochets in each chain, okay, for for the, the little more seasoned crocheter that understands the chain terminology. And I will show you the foundation chain, which you actually do the chain row and the first row all at the same time. I will show you that later because that's a little too much. So this point, you are going to turn your work. Actually, you're going to chain two and then turn your work. And it says to double crochet in the first stitch, which is this one right here. Okay, we're going to double crochet in this one. And then front post double crochet around the next stitch. Okay, so when you're doing a front post this here is called a post and it's the stitch that's down below because there's no stitch here to do. So when you do a front post double crochet, it's going to go down around the post of this stitch, which is here in between my fingers. You're not going to be catching any of this up here. You're actually going to be, and we're going to do a double crochet. So we're going to do our yarn over and we're going to go, this is the, the, the stitch under the one that we just did. So the front post is going to go around this here. So we're going to go in through the front, around the post. So you're actually just picking up the double crochet. Yes, double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Lemon and cello. Yes, you are going to double crochet in the second chain from the hook. We are doing the waffle stitch right now. So... Once you've got yourself around this front post, you're going to go ahead and do the technique for the double crochet. You're going to yarn over, pull your loop through, okay? And then just as if to do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops. And you have done a front, front post crochet. What that does is it lifts that stitch up. You can see that it has actually raised that stitch up. If you look down the length of this, it has raised the stitch up, okay? Now, it says after you do that front post, you're gonna double crochet in the next two stitches, okay?
Okay, so the next two stitches, we're just going to do a regular standard double crochet. We're going to yarn over, go into, because you don't want to go into this stitch because you just did the post of that one. Okay, you're going to want to go into this V. You don't do that because you just did that one. So you're going to come over to this one and go into here. Okay, so we are going to double crochet into that one. And we are going to double crochet into the next stitch right here, the top. Okay. Now, all you're going to do, my yarn's splitting up here, is repeat that across. You're going to do a front post double crochet and then two single or double crochets. So this one right here will be where the double post crochet gets done on this post. And then you're going to double crochet in the top of this one and the top of this one. Okay. So again, yarn over, go down here beside the post, and you're just going to go right straight through, and you're going to pick it up. This is what it's going to look like on the back side. You're going to pick up that stitch. Okay. I don't know who you are wanting to co-host. I don't co-host unless I know who you are. Um, if you would like to talk, um, please multi-guest. We're doing our double crochet in that front post. Okay. Then we are going to go two double crochets in the next two stitches. So we're going to put, and I'm watching through the camera view here, so I make sure I stay in frame. So if I'm a little delayed or a little slow, I'm just making sure that I'm getting it where I need to be. One double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Okay. And we are going to do, because I, I've got just enough to do what it says to do twice, because I'm not doing 135 chains. That's too much to show a demo. Um, then we're going to, for the ending, when we end it, we want to make sure to have enough stitches. So if you want to do this on a, project that you want to determine yourself you're going to need one you're going to need three three multiples of three plus two stitches and I will explain that later that's more for people who design so at the end it's going to say do a front post double crochet for the last two stitches and then the, the last stitch will be double crochet right here in the end stitch okay now, that is what they call row two, because row one, you actually did your foundation chain, which I can show you that later. Row three, and these are going to be the two rows you repeat. Row two and row three. Row three, you're going to, oh, it says chain two before you turn. Okay, so we're going to chain two, then we're going to turn our work. And for row three, we're going to double crochet in the first two stitches and then front post double around the next two. Ooh, okay. So we're going to double crochet in this one. And we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Okay. Now we're going to do front post crochet, double front post crochet in the next two stitches. So, yarn over, go down so that you can grab your front post, pull your yarn through, and then do your double crochet as normal. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. And we're going to make sure that we're going to catch this next post. So, we see this one here we've already caught. You see it here. We're going to go over here to this next stitch and do another front post double. Okay, this is what it is doing is it is, I can feel it. It's pulling those two stitches back as you do this one on this row. You can see it's pulled those two stitches back and it's allowed that front post to make that little square. Okay, so again, we are going to do two double crochets. Make sure we don't catch that one there because that was for that post. We'll go over to this one. Okay, we're going to do two double crochets. Is it two or one? 
one double crochet. I'm looking at row two, I'm sorry. One double crochet. And then we're gonna do two front posts again. Okay. So we're gonna go front post on this one. And then front post on this one. And then we will have this is a pretty interesting stitch. I've never used this stitch before. I've heard of it. Um, yeah, on a blanket, this would make a blanket really warm. And we're just doing a regular double crochet on the last stitch. So for a waffle stitch, and I'll show you this on the other side. You're not going to see it too much because I've only got, you know, enough to do two little squares. But you can see there how the front posts pull this up, the single one. And on the back, when you do the two front posts together it pulls it back through this is the waffle stitch yes so for this one if you want to write this down you you chain as many as you want your first row is a row of double crochets all the way across your second row is going to be chain two then turn your work um, do a double crochet in the first stitch then you'll do one front post double crochet on the next stitch and then you'll do double crochet in the next two stitches row three you're going to chain two and then turn your work double crochet in the first two stitches then you're going to front post double crochet around the next two stitches and one double crochet in the stitch after that so your even rows, you have one front post double crochet and two double crochets. Your third row, it is two front posts and one double crochet. So you stagger them from row to row and the single front posts pull it forward. The double front posts will pull it to the back and it will give you that waffle stitch. And this again, because you're creating little air pockets in here, would be very good for baby blanket wise um, it would it would trap the the heat and make it a little warmer than just a regular flat knit or crochet but yes this is this is really nice um, I do have a waffle blanket pattern here um, I will I'm going to save this pattern that I used and I will link it in my bio for anyone else who may want to look at this. And it's it's only three pat three rows, and you just keep repeating those uh, rows two and three to completion. But yeah, this could be neat to make if you use a smaller thread. You could make little waffles for your kids to have in their kitchen for cooking, um, so that they actually have food. Um, Okay, Debbie, I will link this pattern in my bio. Um, you do know where to um, find my bio on TikTok, right? Right up underneath my name where it says I have this many followers and stuff. There's a link at the very bottom before you see all of my pictures and videos. Um, it is a link tree link and in there is every link that I share. Hello, Pink Witch. How are you doing today? Thank you for the likes. I saw you doing some instruction yesterday. I can't remember what it was that you were making, but I stopped in for a few minutes. I hope you're doing well. I love the bags that Pink Witch makes. You guys have to check her out, too. She makes some really awesome bags. Jump over in her... Uh, TikTok and give her a check out too. She's she's really good. She's really good. But it is 20 after 10 my time. Well, 10 18 if we want to get technical. I'm going to go ahead and end for now. I know we still have a lot of people in here. Um, I definitely will be back at 12 o'clock on the dot. Uh, we are going to do some knitting at 12 today. 
and I can be on here till seven o'clock tonight. So if anybody has anything, skulls and granny squares, yes, yes. There, I'm telling you, there are a lot of crafters here on TikTok that I am going to promote. Um, I, I am one who I, I like to lift people up, uh, boost people, um, and and that's what uh, I enjoy doing. It, it brings me extreme joy. So yes, if you are a little on the racier side and you do like skulls and granny squares, check out Pink Witch. She's got a lot of neat stuff. And yes, uh, I will be back at 12. We'll do some knitting, uh, knitting basics for the beginners. Um, and if there's any other stitches you want to see, uh, knit stitches, crochet stitches, um, any other thing, uh, Debbie, while I'm out, I'm going to get that bucket hat set out for you. And I wrote Melly's name down on here, but I don't know what she needed help with. And I'm not sure if she's still in here. Oh, you enjoy your day too, Pink Witch. I hope you have a very great day. But yes, we will be back at noon. Um, bring your knitting needles, uh, yarn, whatever you might like to do. I'm not sure who that is, and I'm probably going to have to turn that option off. I hope I can turn that off without turning off the multi-guest to be able to help. I don't co-host with others on live unless I know who you are. So um, if you want to jump in with my live to ask questions, please use the multi-guest. So that way we can keep things, you know, under control. But I will see you guys at noon. Please come back and join me. Tell your friends. Share my live. Um, everything that I share is absolutely free. I do not charge anything. No subscription fees. Uh, nothing like that. Uh, try to keep my patterns on the free side. Um, that way, you know, we don't get any copyright issues. And um, yeah, for Pink Witch, all you have to do is just click on her icon if she's still here. Um, but yeah, check her out. She's got a lot of neat stuff and I'll see you guys at 12. And again, 